Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to another how-to video. Today we're talking about spray guns. And I know it sounds daft, some of you have never ever picked up a spray gun and you have no idea what you're looking at, how they work, how the settings work, what kind of spray gun you should buy. Uh, there's different models, makes, sizes, uh, they've got different fluid tips, different needle sizes. You might have looked on Google or other search engines and gone, Whoa, what do I get? What do I need? And etc. etc. So today we're going to address some of them problems. Uh, we're aiming this sort of at beginners, but you might already have, you know, got a spray gun, used it, tried to use it, don't fully understand what settings do what. Uh, we're going to walk you through and hopefully you'll be able to make a decision at the end of this video and it might be useful for some of you. And any questions you got, feel free, leave us a comment and I'll try and answer all the questions as well because I understand that it's a bit of a minefield for some of you. So let's turn you around, show you some spray guns, some different types, different models. Let's get you a basic understanding of what to do and where to go from here. And yeah, let's crack on. Okay, here's some of my spray guns and we're gonna use some of these as an example. So let's start over here with this little one. This is what we call um, a mini gun. This is a SATA mini jet. Uh, now, as, as the years have gone on, they've got a bit bigger, to be honest. There are actually smaller miniguns than this one. This is predominantly used for little blow-ins, bumper corners, stuff like that. Um, you can do bigger areas with them, but they're, you know it's not really designed for that. I wouldn't recommend it. But great little option uh, in the future. It's just something that we use. You probably won't need it. These other guns here are like a conventional size. This one here is um, my SATA jet. This is the new Phaser. This is the X5500RP. Now this looks a bit different to normal spray guns as in the design. And this has got a slightly different uh, pot on the top of it from what you're used to seeing. And But we'll go through that in a second. This is what I use for clear coat. If you're not familiar with the term, that's lacquer. Um, this is a DV1. This is the Vilbis's new dv1 digital this is the um their clear coat version which is also you know lacquer that's what we call lacquering that's got a digital air gauge up there and that's the adapter for my pots these pots are called a pps system and inside them you have like a, a lid and a liner and it goes inside that and once you're done you take it out clean your gun through and dispose of this it just saves cleaning all your pot out and stuff so this one is my DeVilbis GTI Pro Light with a conventional pot. Uh, and this is sort of what you'd be looking at online. Uh, they look, you know, conventional. Uh, this is an air gauge, air pressure regulator or cheater valve. Uh, I got them on most of my guns. This one's digital, it's built in. So you adjust the dial and it tells you the reading now. And moving over here, this is my primer gun. I've got a dedicated primer gun. This is called a PRI Pro Light and this is another gti pro light that's my base coat gun i have another one now and we've got another little mini gun up there which is for base coat uh, and i've probably got more in my box but um you're not going to need as many guns as i've got this is uh what happens when you're a painter <laughs> you end up with loads now they all look familiar they all look similar they all do obviously a similar job so they've all got a trigger as you'll notice this is obviously what we pull to make paint come out of the spray gun so i'm gonna put the tripod down and i'm gonna start showing you some of the features some of the adjustments and the settings and how to get them going basically right so let's go through the basics this is an air cap Behind the air cap, you unscrew the air cap. That's your fluid tip. And inside, running all the way through, is a needle. You pull the trigger, it releases the needle, and air and paint come out of the front. So, this is your trigger. 
When you, every single spray gun is the same. When you pull the trigger in a little bit, air will come out and you pull it in a bit more and it will spray. Obviously I've not collected the airline, so just releasing the finners at the moment for demonstration purposes. We've just got some gun wash finners in now. Um, we'll connect it up and show you. Right, at the bottom of most guns, this adjustment screw at the bottom is for your air pressure. Now, when you connect your spray gun to an airline, it's going to deliver however much air pressure is in your airline. So, for argument's sake, uh, my airline is about six bar. Um, yeah, just under. So I've just connected my airline. I've got six bar. Now, six bar is way too much pressure to spray with. So if you're spraying, a general rule of thumb, if you're spraying paint, as in the base coat, uh, you're gonna be around one bar, one and a half bar, give or take. If you are priming, similar again. And if you are lacquering, you're gonna be around two bar. Two bar is sort of a universal sort of standard pressure. Most guns operate really well at two bar for clear coat. Um, so, if you don't have regulator or cheater valve at the bottom and your compressor's giving you six bar, you're gonna just try and spray six bar out of there unless you adjust your valve here and close it off. Six bar's too much. I recommend if you haven't got one, go and get yourself a cheater valve, a little regulator. Um, I think I got this one from, is it PMP Supplies or Air Guns? I think it was Air Guns Direct, they're about 20 quid. Um, it's the best way of you knowing how much pressure you got in your gun. So, I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how you set this up. So when you plug these in, you want to open up your fluid, all of the, uh, fluid, sorry, your air pressure, all of the way, and then you control it off of this little gold bit here, which will move your pressure up and down. So at the moment, before you press the trigger, it's showing you what's in the airline. Now it's gonna get a bit noisy, but when I pull the trigger, the gauge will adjust and tell us our setting. So I'm only gonna pull the trigger in a little bit so just air comes out. Can't turn the compressor off, it's too noisy. So when I pull the trigger, I've adjusted it, as you saw there. Uh, when I pull the trigger in, with, so just to let a little bit of the air out, that should go to two bar. So there we go, have a look. Then I let go and it goes back to the pressure that's in the line. So, I know that's gonna be a bit noisy, obviously demonstrating with air. Up the top here, I said that there's a needle that runs all the way through. So this is your fluid adjustment. Now, what I tend to do on most guns and what will work on most guns is you unwind that all of the way out until it, just before it comes off and then you screw it in. And when you pull the trigger all the way in, if the gun was empty, in fact, give me one second, I'll get an empty gun to show so you this. We've got an empty gun so I can pull the trigger and nothing will come out. So, unscrew this all the way. This is your fluid adjustment. So I do it all the way. That's, I know this is too much now, but I'm over exaggerating it. If you undo it too much, it'll come out. Chances are there's a spring behind it and then there's your needle poking out there. Push that back in, it's springing, screw that back on. So what we're looking for is you pull the trigger all the way in and you screw this fluid tip down, fluid tip, you know, you know fluid adjustment until it stops, until that bites. You'll feel it pushing the trigger forward, okay? So that is now wide open because I can feel the resistance on this trigger. So it's now wide open. So I know that my fluid is full. And I normally paint full fluid and that, that's fine. So I know that some of you are only gonna have one gun and the one gun that you got might be a one gun for everything. So if you went and got yourself a 1.4 fluid tip and you wanted to try and get a bit of primer through it, a bit of paint, a bit of clear coat. Now, primer would be fine. 1.4 is a little bit small. In my opinion, I would want 1.6 or 1.8 really. 
but you can get by it. You'd have to reduce, you know, put a bit of extra thinner in your primer to make it come out uh, of your normal gun. I'm only presuming that you're gonna buy one gun uh, and you sort of went for a 1.4. Now for me, 1.4 is a bit too big for clear coat. Uh, I prefer 1.3, but it is a personal preference. Um, in my opinion, 1.4 will give me quite a bit of orange peel. So I would want to wind my fluid in. So I wouldn't want full fluid uh, on a 1.4. So I would want less paint to come out. So I can control the amount of uh, clear coat that's going onto the panel. But that's something that you have to play around with once you've got paint in there and stuff like that. You can just adjust this in all the way so no fluid to come out whatsoever or and you can back it out a few turns and you can see but you can also adjust the amount of material that comes out by the trigger you don't have to have full trigger you can use it so you pull it in a little bit so air and you can just touch it and you can control the amount of material that this lets out that's something that comes with time and practice I'll try and demonstrate it now with my other gun. It's going to get noisy and then I have to wait a second for the mic to adjust after I've sprayed. So I'm going to pull the trigger so air comes out, then I'm going to pull the trigger so it's full all the way in so you can see and then I'm going to show you after I've pulled it all the way in me just putting it in a tiny bit and you'll be able to see what comes out of it. So here is air, then full, and then we're gonna do air, then a tiny bit. So you can control the gun. The gun doesn't control you. It's all down to how much you pull on that trigger. So if you only want to puff something in really, really gently, you just pull the trigger a tiny, tiny little bit. So once you've got all your settings set up for how you want, so if you're going to be priming, then painting, so it'd be full fluid, full fan, and then you'd be adjusting your air um, like I said, I'd re I recommend getting a regulator or a little cheater valve at the bottom now. You can dictate how much you're going to let out of the spray gun uh, and you can control sort of what goes, goes on there. It's all about getting used to pulling the trigger. You'll get used to pulling it so air comes and then letting the fluid out and sort of go from there. But this just the type of thing where you've got to practice, practice and practice and then you'll get sort of better at it and you'll have more of an understanding of what you've got to do to make it right. So when it comes to clear coat, I'm only presuming that you've gone out and bought like a 1.4. 1.4 is sort of what I would recommend. That's what you could sort of get away with. So if you only had one gun and you've bought a 1.4 for priming and painting normal color, be full fluid, full fan, and about 1 to 1.5 bar of air pressure and then for clear coat I would be winding my fluid in a little bit uh, full fan and running at about 2 bar on the air pressure. I hope that's helped answer a few questions. Uh, I know that if you're experienced sort of you will know this stuff but this is aimed at the beginners really. Um, if you have any questions as always leave us a comment I'll try and answer all the questions and uh, if you're new and you like things like this hit the subscribe button and um, yeah share the videos about and we're coming up with plenty more i'm probably going to go through how to spray um, how to clean a spray gun things like that there's going to be loads of how to's related to painting and stuff in the future so yeah have a good one and i'll see you on the next one